And now, history repeats itself in a not necessarily the news retrospective. It's not deja vu. It's only an encore you may have seen before. You met the candidates. You heard the debate. Now, vote for the one man you know you can trust. Vote for Ted Koppel for president. <laughs> and when you do, vote for Phil Donahue for vice president. <laughs> Koppel and Donahue, they know what they're talking about. gentlemen we're now passing over bakersfield those of you wishing to get off here may exit through the front door in 1914 history was made in sarajevo yugoslavia and now 70 years later history will be made again when nntn presents its exclusive coverage of the 1984 winter olympics in spite of cold and record snow, preparations have been going on for months here. And Yugoslavian officials say the roads are almost ready. Sports fans are lined up around the block for tickets, but you'll see it all right here. All the coordination and courage of ski diving. All the drama and suspense of championship ice fishing. All the thrills of figure barrel jumping. All this and more, if they get the roads open and we get our cameras here in time. And now, it's time to play Beat the Diplomat with your host, Jack Carlton. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're very kind. Thank you. Our celebrity diplomat tonight is Henry Kissinger former Secretary of State and currently head of the Commission on Central America. And here to try to beat the diplomat is Grace O'Hara, a part-time short order cook and mother of six from Chicago, Illinois. Grace, are you a little nervous about being on the same stage as Dr. Kissinger? Hell no, Jack. I'm gonna wipe the floor with him. Oh, <laughs> so she's ready to play. How about you, sir? Can you talk? I have trouble hearing him. Certainly, sir. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, that's better. All right, they're both ready. And here's the scenario. Drew's terrorists have seized the American embassy in Beirut and threatened to kill all hostages unless Kissinger personally meets with them to discuss their demands. And we have an added complication. One of the hostages is Dr. Kissinger's favorite mistress. Okay, Grace, you're Kissinger. What do you do? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Lives are at stake. But I don't want to send the wrong message. Oh, gosh, still my own mistress. I'd have to go for the discussion. I would not have any such discussion. Damn. Sure, I had it right. I'm sorry, Grace. The diplomat beat you, so you get nothing. And Henry Kissinger wins a trip to Paris. See you next week when someone just like you tries to beat the diplomat. After winning the release of captured Navy flyer Lieutenant Robert Goodman Jr. in January, the Reverend Jesse Jackson has announced that he will return to Syria and attempt to convince the Syrians to relinquish Goodman's mail. 
The mail, some 5,000 articles in all, has been accumulating for months because Goodman failed to report a change of address to the post office upon his return. In an unrelated story, the beleaguered PLO suffered another setback today as head lice broke out among its members. Leader Yasser Arafat vowed to personally inspect all troops for symptoms. In Paris last night, Jerry Lewis was given France's highest award, La Croix de Stupidité. Lewis then described the reaction back in the States. They can first enjoy what they see happening. <laughs> and they can enjoy that. Then they will think about why is that so stupid. Now this. <laughs> and take a share in a house with people we don't even like. Yeah, yeah. It takes forever on Friday night to get up here. The roads are always iced over. And then we got to pay some twerp good money to put snow chains on our tires. <sighs> Lift tickets cost a fortune. Mm -hmm. And for a 40-minute wait, you get a two-minute run. Yeah. Why do we do this? Why do we bother? Huh. Single! It's the most popular show in town, the All Murder News, from El Salvador to Lebanon, to the hearts of our city. We show the grisliest murders and massacres that you want to see. Our expanded sports coverage brings you boxing deaths. And keeps you informed about everything from volcanoes to floods and who they're killing. So watch the All Murder News for the stories people are dying for. Ted. Ted. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. You didn't mean it? What the hell are you talking about? You called me a stupid ass in front of everybody? You phoned my boss and told him I'm impotent? And that I stole money from the company? You hit me on the head with a pot and knocked me out. You're sorry. Come on, let's have some coffee. Coffee? How can you think about coffee at a time like this? You spent my life savings on gifts for your lesbian lover. You gave him my car, my clothes, even my dog. I ought to strangle you. Oh, sweetie. Come on, have a cup of coffee. <laughs> It'll make you feel much happier and more relaxed. You can call a cab from the house. All right, one cup, and then I'm leaving you forever. Times like these were made for tasty choice. And now, a programming note to remind you what's coming up on the three networks this evening. I'm At 8 o'clock, CBS has TV censored bloopers. NBC has TV's bloopers, commercials, and practical jokes. And on ABC, it follows bleeps and blunders. At 9 o'clock, it slips, snafus, and glitches on CBS. The censored boners, pranks, and pratfalls on NBC. And ABC has TV's miscellaneous miscues, outtakes, and put on. Then, at 10 o'clock, CBS has TV's funny censored bumpers, faux pas, and fallacies. NBC has TV's goofiest censored goofs, gaffs, and last laughs. And on ABC, it's life's most embarrassing animal plus TV's merriest mammal mops and hilarious censored human humiliations. Now then. Arnie. Is it? You got any extra work I can do around here? Working my way back to uh, Amarillo. There. Got some tires around back. Why don't you go back there and stack them up? I'll give you five dollars. Thank you. <laughs> Never mind.
this is Mr. Perdue. Uh, Pleasure. The government, as plaintiff, claims the proposed ITT merger is in violation of the antitrust laws and has presented 310 pounds of argument in evidence. The defendants, ITT, maintain they are merely seeking a fair rate of return within statutory guidelines and have introduced 405 pounds of testimony and precedent. <laughs> to date, the litigation has taken eight years it could take 10 more. Instead, this complex case will be settled tonight by Arnold Stark, a house painter who's always wanted to be a judge on Supreme People's Court. As if 20 below zero and the paralyzing wind chill factor wasn't enough, the Midwest was devastated by exploding snow this week and residents were warned to stay indoors until the storm had passed. <laughs> Election 84 with the NMTN News Team. Here's Bob Giles at the Anchor Desk. From Hollywood to Hoboken, from Boise to the Bronx, from all across America, good evening. Although we're still a number of months away from the time the polls close in most of the country, it still pays to check in with some of the results that we do have at this time in these exciting political contests. So, without further delay, let's go to Steve Casper with the Senate races. Stephen? Nothing yet. We still don't know who the candidates are in some states, let alone who the winners are. Back to you, Bob. Does that confirm? Do we have confirmation? Wonderful. Well, in the big one, the race for the president, we have our first winner of the evening, and I believe we are the first ones with this prediction. <coughs> NNTN computers project Ronald Reagan to be the winner of the presidential contest, with just 0% of the vote counted. That means that he'll remain in office for the next four years. Hmm? Are we ready? Good. Let's go now to Reagan headquarters at the Rich Coffin Hotel in Washington, D.C., and Frosty Kimmel. Frosty? Bob, the Reagan people are taking a very cautious approach to our NNTN projection. So cautious that they haven't even shown up here yet. But when they do, I'll be here. That's very exciting, Frosty. Stay with it. And you stay with us. We'll have more exciting results. Plus, a look at that fierce three-way battle in Missouri in a moment. It's the greatest video arcade game of all time. Battle the evil troops in a fight to the death. So realistic, you'll think you've stumbled into Drew's territory. And the Drew's doesn't fool around. He'll fight you inch for inch for every square inch of Lebanese homeland. He'll even throw himself on a live grenade just to make you sick. But as long as you keep your guard up and your rockets firing, you've always got a chance. Drew's from Danny Thomas Tour. Hi. Welcome to another installment of Sniglets. Now, a Sniglet, of course, is any word that should be in the dictionary but isn't. For instance... We all know that one skier who never bothers to take off his lift tickets. That person is a gang loot. <laughs> Those filthy accumulations of ice and snow on the undersides of cars are called fender birds. <laughs> the Flata Factor states that when you buy $16 worth of gas, the last 10 cents takes longer to arrive than the first 1590. The gauge on a steering column that tells you what gear you're in is the Prindle. <laughs> Wet, bleached, ruined money found at the end of the laundry cycle is known as deterrency. <laughs> Finally, the fear that a kid is holding a snowball with your name on it is called glaciophobia. <laughs> Remember, we can always use new Sniglets. It's a free T-shirt if we use it on the air. That's Sniglets, Post Office Box 2350, Hollywood, California, 90078. That's the new address. At a benefit earlier this week, First Lady Nancy Reagan almost walked off with a valuable art print. 
but an eagle-eyed security guard caught her just in time. The print will now be auctioned off for charity. Now this. Look at this stunning portrait of Ferdinand Marcos. And here's his lovely wife, Imelda. Beautiful enough to be United States postal stamps. And now they are. Hi, I'm here to introduce you to our new commemorative stamp series, Right Wing Dictators of the World. 32 full-color portraits of America's favorite dictators, past and present, designed specially for the Postal Service by UN Ambassador Jean Kirkpatrick. Portraits so beautiful, you'd want them in your own home. Here's Nicaragua's Anastasio Somoza, the Shah of Iran, Augusto Pinochet of Chile, and of course, my favorite, the Duvaliers of Haiti, Papa Doc and Baby Doc, plus many, many more. So come on down to the post office and put a leader on your letter. Coming next, America's favorite war criminals. <laughs> Two bucks to clear his driveway. What a great deal. He didn't tell me where he lived. <laughs> Some gin. Hey, Roy. Hey. Mao, Mao, he's our man. If he can't do it, Buddha can. Buddha, Buddha, he's our man. If he can't do it, Dong Xiaoping can. Do Even in its short existence, the Environmental Protection Agency has provided us with many sparkling moments, like the time Rita Lavelle testified before the Senate. The date, February 24th, 1983. Lavelle, administrator of the EPA Superfund, was played a tape and asked to identify the voices on it. I'll give you five bucks to ignore the dioxin cleanup program. <laughs> Make it seven. Uh, okay, it's a deal. Sound like uh, some of my program people. That's not what the senators wanted to hear. As a result, she was canned. I'm Mitchell Lawrence with an EPA moment, another in our series of capital offenses. Mom and Pop had a problem. Their phone didn't work. So they called us at American Bell. But we don't fix phones anymore. Now, we're AT&T information system. So instead of fixing their phone, we installed $950,000 worth of high-tech equipment, putting them in instant telecommunications with Mom and Pop Zurich and Mom and Pop Tokyo. Unfortunately, Mom and Pop couldn't pay our bill, so we absorbed them. And you're next. AT&T. We'll be a monopoly again. Soon. AT&T will be a monopoly again. This just in. President Reagan lashed out at critics today who claim he's leading us down the road toward Orwell's 1984. Now, this. Your rights. They're pretty darn important things. Free speech, freedom of religion, public assembly. Well, America just wouldn't be America without them. But do you really know your rights? All of them? Knowing and exercising your rights is your best protection against having them taken away or being abused. Let's watch. <laughs> at this hour? I don't know. I'll see. Good evening, sir. Good evening, ma'am. Young people. The barracks down at the fort are full up, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to quarter my troops in your home tonight. Are we at war? Why, no, sir. We're just out of beds at the army base. You men, go upstairs and bunk down. Reveille is at 0530 hours. Well, now, hold on a minute. The Constitution says that no soldier shall, in time of peace, be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner. I'm sorry, but uh, I'm afraid you're going to have to find someplace else to sleep. You mean we can't stay here? The Constitution says that? 
Here, see for yourself. <laughs> Article 5. Darn it. Well, I guess we'll just have to try next door. Move out! I just hope your neighbors don't know their rights as well as you do, mister. Oh, here's your constitution. Oh, you keep that one, Sarge. I've got another upstairs. <laughs> You're right. Use them or lose them. <laughs> Candidate George McGovern, out campaigning in Maine, told supporters America deserves a break today. He then served up a recipe for reform that he himself nicknamed McGovernment. Among his political McNuggets, replacing the Statue of Liberty in New York with the St. Louis Golden Arch, making the Supreme Court a drive through and calling it the Court Supreme, reducing America's nuclear arsenal to one huge missile called the Big Mac, but pledging never to resort to a Big Mac attack, posting the national debt outside of Congress. McGovern also promised to distribute free glasses bearing pictures of the goofy members of his cabinet. McGovern understands that what people don't like about government is that it's too costly and too slow, says campaign manager Ed McMuffin. Who ever heard of paying taxes and getting back change? More in a moment. One minute, Jackie. Jacqueline Pinnell, Borscht lover. <laughs> yep, I'm a Borscht lover. Mm. And any excuse to sit down to a bowl of borscht is a good excuse the way I see it. <laughs> borscht comes from beet. And beets come from, well, I don't know where they come from. But I do know this. In homes where borscht was served on a regular basis, there were fewer cases of vitamin deficiency reported than in homes where borscht was not served regularly. So, borscht is good. Jacqueline Pennell. More fighting in Beirut today. Bush. It can't be beat. This bulletin just in. President Reagan today announced that the evil monster Godzilla has left its lair and gone on a rampage. It was crossing the northern border of Israel. It was preying on civilians, citizens there. Reagan flew to Tokyo, Godzilla's favorite stomping grounds, to confer with Prime Minister Nakasone, said the Japanese leader. Oh, Godzilla, he no monster. He uh, just misunderstood. This year for Valentine's Day, don't give your loved one a card or flowers or candy. This year, give cash. Then they can buy what they want. The United States Mint. We make money the old-fashioned way. We make it. The Secret Service today trotted out one of its bomb-sniffing dogs in a demonstration for the press. Come on, Pete. Smell a bomb. It's in here, boy. Smell a bomb. It's in here. Smell it, boy. Smell a bomb? It's in here, inside. Smell it, Pete. Here it is, boy. Smell a bomb. Smell it, boy. It's in here, in here. Come on, smell a bomb. Oh, forget it. Hey! 